Welcome to the channel everyone. In today's video, I will show you guys that with a small modification, how easy it is to turn this Dell Laptop XSFF into a 1080p gaming monster. So before we start, I will show you guys all the things that we need and all the things that you have to buy to make this process nice and easy. And then also the big question is guys, before you do this case swap, why not just buy an any H310 motherboard to make this process nice and easy? Well, you will be saving about $50 because you already have a working motherboard and then or you could invest that $50 into a better GPU, which I did. So my Dell Optip X is the 3070. So this time I got a different model to ensure this case will work with all the other models. And then also mine comes in an i5-9500. That is a six cores and six thread processor. Still great for anything on a budget level. Also, it comes with 16 gigs of RAM. And also this Optip X comes with a 512 gigabyte SSD and a 200 watt power supply. So without further ado, let's get to it. First thing you will need is your case, of course. The case that I went by is the Sama ARGB Q5. Lovely case. It's a micro ATX from Factor. It comes with a tempered glass. It comes with three beautiful ARGB fans. The best feature about this case is that it comes with a fan slash ARGB controller on the back. Because this is what's really gonna make this case swap nice and easy. Because all we will need is to plug a set of power just to make all our fans work. And then also, because this Dell motherboard do not come with any extra fan headers, meaning that we won't be able to plug any of our fans and then and also it only comes with the CPU fan header. I don't recommend plugging a, a fan splitter on the CPU fan header because this CPU usually running at max speed, meaning that all your fans will be running at max speed, which can get really loud. So that's why I don't recommend using a, a fan splitter on the CPU header. So the first thing that I bought was this 6-pin adapter to 24-pin. This is what will connect into the power supply 24-pin because all ATX power supply comes with a 24-pin. So meaning that you will need this 6-pin to plug onto the power supply. And then the 6-pin will plug into the motherboard. And the next thing you will need is a backplate because after we take out the Dell motherboard out of the case, it will not have a backplate because Somehow Dell made it a built-in backplate, so you will definitely need a backplate for this to work. These could be found around like $2 on eBay, but also you could probably could find them really cheap on your local market, or you could even find them for free at any eBay center that's close by. And the next thing you will need is a new power supply. So mine is an Epivia 800 watt 80 plus gold rated. I purchased this one on Mercari.com for only $16. Amazing purchase. Since you know our Dell power supply is too weak, it only comes with 200 watts, so you will not have enough juice to power this GPU. This is where the investment went. So, by saving the $50 from getting the H310 motherboard, I was able to invest 40 more dollars into this GPU. So, at first, I was planning on getting like a, a GTX 1070 Ti or a GTX 1660 Super or something like that. But since I was able to save 40 more dollars, I invested into this beast. This is a GTX 1080 Ti. Comes with 11 gig of VRAM. Comes with GDR5X. This card's still a beast, even though it came out back in 2017. Man, look at the design on this baby. EVGA, man. They really knew their stuff. Um, you can definitely get over 120 FPS in any esports game with this beast. Next, you will need a 1x8 drill bit because, you know, all third party cases come with an ITX layout micro ATX or ATX or EATX but somehow they'll create a poop TX you know they don't want anyone to use their component inside into another case you know from a business standpoint it's awesome but from a consumer standpoint that's really doo doo Thank you. 
now guys before you put the motherboard in so before so you can make the holes what i recommend you to do is that if you have any network card or um any old graphics card or, or even the graphics card you plan on using what i recommend is for you to put it in the pci slot and then you put it inside the case because the thing is that i don't want the case to lean down because that's if you have a bigger and heavier graphics card like mine if you don't put it straight that means the card will be leaning some type of way all right so what i recommend you to do is use a your gpu put it in the pci slot align it with the gpu swap now it's aligned really well and then all you have to do now is just screw it down and then and then you screw it down so as long as you do this you still have to like you know kind of try to tilt it a little bit as long like you have them more the back ports like aligned like this and you have your gpu aligned really straight then you know that um it's right all right so now what you have to do is just make the holes so i already made mine i already made mine so all you have to do is just put it here and then then you just drill it down remember you just hold it down nice and steady you could even just do it slowly then you just do one i recommend you do one on the top right next to, and then you go bottom right next to this m.2 slot right over here and then you go bottom left next to the gpu so this is where you will make the three holes it's one two and three so as long as you have these three you know that um the motherboard will sit in straight and then also i do not recommend doing this one on top over here because when you do upgrade into like a better motherboard like a regular motherboard so you i don't want you to you know messed up this hole where the standoff is on the top left but as long as you have your motherboard sitting straight and it's not making contact with the case your pc will always be able to turn on all right so just trying to leave it like into like a square layout shape and then the motherboard will sit in straight all right guys so now in order to relocate the standoffs to this location over here and this one and that one what you're going to need to do you will need a nut setter so this nut setter is the one that you will put on top of the standoffs then you use your screwdriver then you unscrew it and then you do the same thing again then you put it down into the hole then you put your nut setter then you use your screwdriver to relocate it also guys i did all everything in the first um video that i did last year so you guys can definitely go back if you want to see like a more in-depth i definitely recommend you guys to go back to see it too and watch it all right now if you have the same case like me I recommend you use two motherboard screws and then one PSU, one power supply screw because this standoff is like a bit further back. The, the shot is, the shot of the case is a bit lower on that part. So you will need a, a PSU screw instead. Let's put it here and then you will need a motherboard screw, regular motherboard for this one. And you will need another. What about screw? All right. So now, what you have to do is just screw them down. Now, guys, for the fans, I recommend you use this six vent to SATA. This is this one comes with the Dell Optiplex. It's actually plugged over here. So what you have to do is just plug it back here, and then. You just kind of pass this on the bottom over here so you will not even get in the way of your gpu so you just go to the bottom here now all you have to do is just plug this SATA power to the fan hub all right now that's how your fan will stay on and will stay off when you shut down the pc okay so this is what i recommend you to use so here's our beautiful power supply
to do now is just plug this 24 pin to 6 pin adapter. And you could just pass it right over here. Alright, and then you could just keep it like that. So before we plug it in, before we turn the case, what I recommend you do to pass your a full pin CPU power. So now we can just plug the 6 pin to 24 pin right over here and this 4 pin CPU power right up top. Alright, so it's this one. Alright, so now it's plugged in. This is optional too. So if you want to use me, I would just not in the first video, I, I remember I did say, yeah, you have to buy it, but to tell you the truth, I don't recommend you to because you can still use these USBs if you want. You know, as long, you make a hole under the case and then you just weave out whatever wire that you need. You can just pass it on the bottom. So that's what I did. So I said that you would just plug it in this, say the zero. In the first video, guys, I showed you that you could use AM.2 screw. And in this video, I will be using a SATA just to show you guys. And after that, you just take this hard drive and, and then you're set with this side. Now all you have to do is just close this side of the case. We are done. And we mount this. So now we have to into a blue PCI slot and push it down. Make sure you push like this side down like this until you hear a click. So now all we have to do is just screw it down. All right, now it's nice. Now all you have to do is just plug your PCI connectors. So one is a six pin. And this is an 8 pin. So now guys, now I think it's the best time to talk about this is the power pin, which I explained it in the first video. The reason why is this jumper cap. So one and two. One and two is the first one on the right. And then three and four is the one in the middle. And then five, you don't need to worry about the one that's by itself over here. So what you have to do, use a jumper cap. And then you just plug it. Just put it in the middle and that's it. So now as soon as you put that down, basically you will bypass all the security boot features that they'll put into the PC, okay? So now all you have to do is plug your power switch on one and two, and that's it. All right guys, so the first game we'll be testing with our Sharp Triplex is Marvel Rivals 29-1080p low settings of course with screen reflection on off um you would get an average of 116 fps especially that this game is built on unreal engine 5 so you know unreal engine 5 is definitely not friendly to all the hardware but our software is performing amazingly And the next game that I will be testing is GTA 5, the enhanced version. This game just still looks stunning. That's amazing. Um, currently run it on very high settings at 1440p, and then you will get an average of 109 FPS. This game is just truly beautiful.
and the next game is always oh, Fortnite, of course. Um, at 1080p on performance mode, and I'll also view this as is on far, and then texture is on low. Uh, the fuck is just breeze through that game because you will get an average of 196 FPS. And then I did run the regular version, which is a bit harder to run because it's built on Unreal Engine 5. And I got an impressive 135 FPS on performance mode also. So not only did the software perform amazingly, but for some reason I've been using it for a month now and I can stop playing on it. Now the next event I'll be testing is Cyberpunk because I was truly shocked because with no upscaling, and on high settings of course and then I got an average of 67 FPS I really thought I was gonna go under 60 but I was wrong and the 1080 Ti and the i 95 went to just truly perform really well in that game so I did test 1440p on the high settings of course with no upscaling and I still got an average of 52 FPS the crazy thing is that this game even on 52 FPS still playing amazingly Alright guys, another successful case swap, and then also it feels so good just to be able to put a bigger graphics card. Although the PC may not be a beauty inside the case, but she's a beauty in FPS. And also if any of you are curious about this case swap, I'll put the link of the Discord down in the description. So just join the Discord and I will answer all your questions, alright? Catch you guys another time.